Before the video starts, I want to give you a heads up on the many, so yeah, that will appear. <laughs> Enjoy. Hello everyone, and welcome to this time-lapse video for a mock-up for Treasured. In the background, you can see the time-lapse of me creating some kind of water temple mock-up scene. Um, yeah, so I kind of wanted to talk about why I create these mock-ups, because, um, yeah, some of you might be wondering, why isn't he just creating the game instead of experimenting with mock-ups? Well, you see, I am uh, a programmer, so I'm really, uh, uh, I am struggling with the art side, and uh, these mock-ups actually give me the opportunity to experiment with art. So how do walls look? How do floors look? You know, there are a lot of different elements that go into creating a scene that, well, <laughs> you might not think about it, but it actually is harder than you might think. So that's why I create these mock-ups. Uh, and plus, it's also a great way for me to visualize my uh, vision for Treasured. So how do I actually want to make it look? Uh, stuff like that. So yeah, I am still learning uh, how to uh, create stuff that looks good. But yeah, so <laughs> bear with me with all the mockups. Uh, there will be a lot more, I guess. So in this Time lapse. I actually created some custom models, um, but you won't see me create them because I only recorded the Unity scene. That is a problem on my part. <laughs> I forgot to actually record the whole display, so here you can see me importing one of those models. Yeah, same goes for texturing. Uh, I created some textures, but I also forgot to <laughs> record those screens. So you won't see any of those. It will just be Unity, which uh, isn't too bad. So I had to create a little bit different models for this scene because, well, I wanted to experiment with that. Uh, that's also the whole reason for all of the uh, mock-ups, experimenting with how to place things, but also how to, well, potentially add custom models. So in this case, I wanted to have water come down the, the wall here and then show, uh, show it going over the floor and then down to a bigger pit of water. And instead of just having this one big chunk of water flowing down, I wanted to give it a little bit more detail. So that's why I created the little model uh, waterway on the floor. <laughs> I'm not sure how to call that. I'm actually experimenting with the water. Uh, that's why you see a lot of the mock-ups using the water. Uh, I really like how this uh, low-poly water looks. It's from uh, Jolix, I believe. I hope I pronounced that correct. It's actually a really old asset. So it's not compatible with the new render pipelines from Unity, which is a shame because it looks really nice. Um, maybe one day I will update it. That was a rude interruption. So maybe in the future I might dabble with updating it to URP if I actually want to use URP. Um, this is currently just the, the built-in uh, render pipe, no, just a built-in renderer from Unity. So without any of the render pipelines. The only issue, well, I'm not sure if it is an issue, but I can't use Shader Graph, which is, <laughs> I mean, Shader Graph is really nice for someone who isn't uh, experienced, ex experienced in creating shaders, because well, you don't really have to know all of the different shader things because the shader graph already has all of that. But 
yeah, I guess that's a little price to pay for using the built-in renderer. Uh, the water looks great. Um, I think performance is also better. I don't know. I have a lot more experience with everything without URP. So here you can see me placing the like clutter on the ground. Uh, yeah, so I will probably create a little generator that will do all of the clutter. So that's, <laughs> it's again, it's the programmer way of solving a artist problem. I guess you can call it that. Because I am inexperienced with the art side. Uh, I actually create tools <laughs> for me to use with art. So yeah, I mean that's also why I created the IV, which we will see in the later on in this time lapse. I created the IV so I don't. I have a tool that actually allows me to create custom. Well, can I can I call it custom models? I guess we can. But yeah, that's basically the programmer way of solving an artist's problem, <laughs> which is great. Yeah, so here I actually created a little depth by creating this balcony. Uh, I didn't like the railings, so I added a different one. Uh, in a few seconds. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I actually needed to um, organize a little stuff with the uh, in the in the hierarchy. Here I'm actually experimenting with lighting. So that is again one of the things that I'm uh, experimenting with that you probably could have seen if you follow me on Twitter. Uh, I guess that's a nice segue for me to uh, block my Twitter account. Or Discord for that matter. Um, I mean same goes for shadows. Of course I didn't have to add this but I guess it just adds something to the scene. Uh, it gives it a little bit more depth instead of just having you know just a plain light. The shadows actually add some depth to the scene. It, it actually showcases that there is a little bit more to the whole scene than just the, well, <laughs> this whole water temple stuff. So the fines are actually a problem. I'm not sure if a pro problem sounds so big. I I want to add a little bit more detail to the vines because if I just use this asset pack it I only have like five vines that will work in very specific situations and because there might be a lot more situations that I can use them in I probably need to create a like a generator <laughs> again the programmer way of solving an artist problem I was actually thinking about how I would populate a level. So I will probably add some kind of uh, generator for all of the uh, stuff. So basically I would just have a layout, uh, like 2D layout uh, program. And then I can just generate the floors and the walls and all of the clutter and the foliage and vines and trees and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So that way I only have to worry about the layout and then the game itself will worry about the um, how it looks. So I guess now I'm going to add the ivy. I actually had someone comment on an... Uh, uh, an a mock-up with Ivy and I completely agree with what it said it actually said that the Ivy looked a little bit too random and it didn't look as Ivy look like Ivy Wow so I yes I agree because Ivy it I mean it has like a stem that it grows to uh, there is a lot more depth to it because currently it just picks a random position and then puts like a square leaf on it. So I actually want to 
redo the IV and add a little bit more detail to it instead of just picking a random position and then making uh, some adding some quads to it. So yeah, but <laughs> don't worry, that will probably take some time. Yeah, these last details are basically just me also experimenting with how things would look if I add, you know, just a little bit of ivy between the waterfalls. I also experiment with one below the waterfall, like where the where the plant is between the, uh, the, the two water lines. But I actually didn't like that because it then gets a little bit too cluttered. Like where did the ivy come from? There is no other connection to the ivy. And I guess that's also one of the things that I need to take into account, uh, especially when it comes to uh, generating foliage. You know, where did it where did it come from? You can't just have a single piece of grass somewhere randomly in the middle because then where did it come from? So if you like the time lapses, let me know in the comments below. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it of course if you dislike it because YouTube likes that. And if you want to follow me on the social media uh, to get more updates, you can always find them in the description below. That's it for this video, until next time, take care.